Four receptions, 56 yards, and one touchdown. He may be the greatest New England Patriot to ever live. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I am joined by Antonio Brown. Why are we talking about Antonio Brown? We're talking about Antonio Brown because he has reportedly worked out with the New Orleans Saints and is perhaps looking to join them on a very deep playoff run and potential Super Bowl victory. As all of you know, signing Antonio Brown is very high risk, high reward. He dominated the NFL in his years on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Didn't play a single game for the Raiders, played one game for the Patriots, and was then cut. He has been in the headlines for all of the wrong reasons this year. We're going to talk about what the New Orleans Saints could do if they potentially sign Antonio Brown, how dominating that receiving core would be, and how good, bad, and ugly them signing, uh, signing Antonio Brown could potentially go. Let's talk about it. There is so much good, so much bad, and so much ugly that could come out of signing someone like Antonio Brown to your football team. Obviously, we all know, um, despite what you think of Antonio Brown, we all clearly know how valuable he is. Uh, we all know that Antonio Brown, when he played for the Steelers before his uh, rough ending to that term, was the best ride receiver in football right next to Julio Jones. Um, so today we're going to talk about this. I woke up and I saw that Antonio Brown had reportedly begun working out with the Saints. And I'm going to talk about how this is good, bad, and ugly. Now the Saints currently are holders of, in my position, the best wide receiver in football, Michael Thomas. I know a lot of you will say, what about Julio Jones? Julio Jones is right there, but he's what Michael Thomas has begun doing in recent years and up until this point um, has called for me to say that he is the best wide receiver in football, and that is just my honest opinion. To both stay completely on the field, uh, I don't worry about Michael Thomas doing that. Michael Thomas and Antonio Brown as a dual wide receiver threat would, without hesitation, be the best wide receiver threat in the NFL. That is just unbelievable to think of what could possibly happen or possibly happen with that. But there obviously, as you know, is a very high risk, high reward uh, potential of signing someone like Antonio Brown. The first one is high risk. Antonio Brown signed with the Oakland Raiders. He had his whole helmet fiasco. Then we saw him lashing out at managers and, and, and uh, upper management. And clearly that did not go very well for Antonio Brown. Uh, they eventually made the decision to cut him. The Raiders, I felt like the Oakland Raiders were trying to give Antonio Brown as many chances as possible to possibly say, listen, get your head in the game. Let's do this. We want you here. And he did not take advantage of that. And he was not thinking in the right mindset. And obviously you saw him celebrating when the Raiders released him. That was going on for a couple weeks. And then all of a sudden we saw perhaps maybe one of what had potential to be one of the best wide receiver quarterback duos in NFL history. We saw Antonio Brown sign with the New England Patriots. My first reaction was, well, there's another one for Brady. That didn't happen because Antonio Brown only played one game with the New England Patriots. And although he did get a touchdown in that game, that was the only game he played. Uh, more of the um, sexual assault allegations began to come out on Antonio Brown. And clearly uh, the Patriots made the decision to cut him. And I knew that that was coming because the Patriots pull no, they pull no punch. Um, Patriots know that they can make use of whatever it is that they have on their team. And they cut Antonio Brown. Uh, he then began to lash out at Robert Kraft. He never said a word about Brady, thank God, because um, you not you don't hear too many guys say anything bad about Tom Brady. You can say what you want about the Patriots organization, you know, the whole cheating scandals. But for the most part, you don't hear too many people say anything bad about Bill Belichick and Tom Brady because they're so respected for all the accomplishments that they have um, as well. So the rest of the season went by. We heard Antonio Brown say, had a little bit of a, a altercations with a variety of people, uh, but we didn't see too much practically from Antonio Brown. Um, and then all of a sudden, we are coming up on the final week of the season, and I see the news that he is working out with the Saints. Now, just at first glance, put all of the BS aside from Antonio Brown, just at first glance, could you think of a more dominating receiving core than Antonio Brown and Michael Thomas? I don't know if New, if, uh, New Orleans is doing this because they want to bolster their receiving core, but they also want a very legitimate receiving threat because they know that come playoff time, players are going to really, on the defensive end, are going to really try to crunch down on Michael Thomas, and nobody's been able to really do that this year. He's been so dominant um, in, his, in his tenure as a Saint, especially this year. You know, he still has the uh, single-season reception uh, record still ongoing. 
Um, I don't know if they if they are electing to do that um, as well. <clears throat> but now let's talk about the risk. <clears throat> These Saints, regardless of what you say, regardless of what you say, the New Orleans Saints have a very, very legitimate chance to win the Super Bowl this year. Um, prior to the season, I predicted the Saints and Patriots as a Super Bowl, and I still think that's a possibility. Obviously, Baltimore looks like they are the front runner for the AFC, but uh, for the NFC, I you know it's, it's everything's up in the air. Seattle's looked weaker in recent weeks. San Francisco's a giant mixed bag. Uh, really, the Packers have been the team that's looked the most consistent. But even then, they, you've seen what they could happen, especially when they played uh, San Francisco during the regular season and they couldn't muster up anything. Um, it's really a giant mixed bag, but I, I like New Orleans. Because I think that they have the scoring power and their defense could really clamp down. Especially with home field, which they're going to try to secure this weekend. Um, I really do like New Orleans to make it to the Super Bowl. So that's kind of my team that I'm going with. With that being said, are the Saints willing to take the risk and potentially sign someone like Antonio Brown? Who obviously has been in the headlines for all of the wrong reasons this entire uh, NFL season. Um, I don't know. Because obviously, you know how valuable he is. When Antonio Brown's on the football field, um, he's easily one of the top three players on the field at any given time, regardless of who they play. I don't know what the, the, uh, the Saints are wanting to do. Because you got to look at it this way. If they sign Antonio Brown and he plays well and everything goes the way it should go, the Saints win the deal. But if the Saints sign Antonio Brown, the playoffs come around, and all of a sudden another scandal or another... Um, mishaps or miscue from Antonio Brown hits the fan, the Saints are now, instead of focusing on their next opponent in the playoffs, their next playoff opponent are going to be stuck answering questions about an Antonio Brown scandal. And I don't think that Sean Payton is someone that wants to sit there ahead of a potential NFC Championship matchup and hear questions about what's the deal with Antonio Brown? Is he playing Sunday? What's this? What's that? Because there are so many things that can go wrong. It is a distraction to the players. They want to know if their friend, Antonio Brown, is going to be on the field. They don't know what's coming out of it. It is a distraction to the coach who now has to answer these questions on Antonio Brown's behalf because he's nowhere to be seen. And it is a distraction to the team, the owner, and everything as a whole. And it will, it will side swipe everything that the Saints are trying to do. Drew Brees has been phenomenal every game for the most part that he's played this year. Um, and so have the Saints in general. So that is the risk. And obviously, that's the risk with any NFL player. But with Antonio Brown, it's higher because you have seen the trend. Antonio Brown has played for, in the last couple of years, three teams. One team he didn't play a single game for. The other team he played just one game for. The Oakland Raiders were trying to give Antonio Brown every possible benefit to play on the team. And he did not want to run with it. He did not want to run with it. So when everybody says, oh my God, Antonio Brown can go to the New Orleans Saints, I think the same thing. We know what he's capable of. We know what he can do on the football field. But the question is, is he going to have his head in the right mindset? And is he going to get it done? And now what happens if there's a play with a player because you know the playoffs are gritty? I could just see, I just see this coming already. But this is just part of the game. I would love to see Antonio Brown get guarded by Richard Sherman in a potential 49ers Saints matchup. Just because I kind of want to see, we know how Richard Sherman is as a player, very good corner, but a very dirty at the same time occasionally, and Antonio Brown is a player of his own. And Rust. Now, generally, Antonio Brown is in the best shape of his career, but you have to also keep into this mindset. He hasn't played since, what was it? I want to say, what was it, week three, week two? So, you know, I'm sure that he's been training and he's been going consistently but, you know, the ball's really in Antonio Brown's court, honestly. And, and that's how it is because he has the potential. He has a, he has a God-given gift to, to be this elite receiver and really break history. We've seen it on Pittsburgh, and that's the last and only time we've seen it. He hasn't done anything with Oakland, New England. You know, he had the one game, but that's it. Antonio Brown has God-given talent that anybody would die to have. But he has to be the one to put all of this BS aside and he has to be the one to say, I want to play football. If he goes on the Saints with that mindset and he plays just as good, if not better than he did, Antonio Brown, all of this will be put to the side. Maybe not put to the side completely, but it will be put to the side to the point of this is what we can do and this is what we can do. So do I think the Saints sign Antonio Brown? Um, I reverse my decision and say they don't sign him. 
The, the Saints don't need Antonio Brown. Could they certainly benefit from him? Absolutely, but they don't need him. So I don't think the Saints should sign Antonio Brown. Um, if they do, good for them. Hopefully he plays well. Obviously his head hasn't been in the game all season and his head has not been on, on the right set of shoulders. So that is just my opinion. That is just what I wanted to bring out there, uh, potentially about this new Antonio Brown news surfacing today.